All right, so this is it. We are hitting the ground running. Being a political campaign season, most Kenyans are um, going to be taken to the podium for all the obvious reasons to campaign. Now that is going to be confirmed, you know, it's, it's already on. But uh, the art of public speaking is something that most people grapple with. Even us here, behind the camera, sometimes we have that stage fright, all right? Some of us. But how would you move a crowd? At what point do you deliver your punchlines? How do you do your personal branding? Even in an organization like this one, how do you manage yourself in terms of how you dress, how you put across your points, so that you can easily move the crowd and sell your agenda in a proper and a straight way? The person who is going to help me to discuss this is Wangoi. Monyua, who is also a journalist, but she decided to quit newsroom to venture into this particular field, which is amazing. I can assure you, I'm in class for free. That's a good thing that comes with this job. I'm in class today. Karibu sana. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me and welcome Absolutely. to class. Absolutely. <laughs> class is on. Yeah, class is on. Class That's is on. Sure. Class That's is on. Sure. We, we, we've seen a lot of things happening mm. across the political divide right now, yeah. and we expect to see much. Mm. What should you expect in terms of communication? Okay, so as a communicator, first, yes. let me say this season is usually exciting. I know we call it silly season because... You call it? Silly season. <laughs> everybody goes crazy. Basak, exactly. Goes, goes, um, they start yeah. all of their communication with all of this training and everything. Yes. But it also provides an excellent platform mm. for um, communicators such as myself to not only put to the fore uh -huh. the importance of not just the words that you speak, yes. but also elements that we have completely ignored mm. um, over the years, and, and this is in the non-verbal element of things. Yeah. So we tend to be very quick to look at the words that people are saying. Uh -huh. People will listen to my words, mm. but who is reading my body language? Yet, professionally, we look at... Um, and we say this so often, I'm, I'm, I actually get tired of yeah. this point, yeah. that 93% of our communication is actually non-verbal. 93% is non-verbal. 93% is what you're not saying, is unspoken. Are we aware of, of that as human beings? We should be. We should be. And the people that are aware of it really know how to, to, to profit from it. Mm. Um, because you have spies that know how to regulate body yes. language. Yes. Body language is really God-given. We, It's something that God has given us. Your body reacts in a certain way. Uh, somebody says something to you or you go through an experience, your body, your non, your unspoken communication sort of tends to come out very quickly. Um, detectives know this often. They know how to read it. They know yeah. how to yeah. um, detect. Is this person telling the truth? Is this person lying? So we look at things and, and communicators as well. We look at things such as what are the eyes telling us? Ah, uh, okay. What are the hands okay. telling us? You know, um, defense poses. This is what, getting what interesting. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting curious. You know, <laughs> so we, we listen to, to the speeches, mm. but are we reading the body language? Mm. I, I get the feeling that if we had a better understanding of nonverbal communication, even as a nation, mm -hmm. we would make better political decisions. I, I, that, it sounds lofty, but. I, I think the thing that we haven't learned so much, yeah. I, I would ask you, anybody who went to journalism school, for yes. example, yes. will tell you that they did communication one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. or one-on-one, -on -one, mm. rather, which is what is communication, this is it, this yeah. is that. Yeah, the but then news. we never really, mm. which is why, I, I know you're protesting that <laughs> I left journalism, <laughs> but I, I realized, I actually got to find out that one of the most valuable things that we can do as communicators mm. across the board mm. is really learn mm. how to listen to people mm. and listen to what is not being said in the room, whatever room this is. 93% is nonverbal communication. 93%. 93%. Words only account for 7% of communication. 93% is what your body is doing, is, 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 is the gestures that you're making, yeah. is how um, the closeness yes. with the people or the mm -hmm. person that you're talking to in the case of interpersonal communication. And um, it, it also is in your body movement, how mm. you react, how you, you, know, how you, you do that. A yeah. lot of it is in the eyes also. Yes. Yeah. There's also an element of it that's in your tone. Right. Yes. 
I, 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 I do that, you know, right. my tone. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I come from a family of what you say, commanders. So one of the things personally yeah. that I am learning, mm -hmm. I have had to learn for, for quite a while, and I am still learning, mm -hmm. is how to manage my tone. Mm -hmm. So that when you sound, um, uh, there's, 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 there's a sound expert, his name is Julian Treasure, and I value his insights. Mm -hmm. And he says that there's a difference between you saying, where did you leave my keys? Or Victor, where did you leave my keys? Or Victor, where did you leave my keys? The tonal variation changes. Same words, but the tone variation communicates different things. Victor, where did you leave my keys? Yeah. Victor, where did you leave my keys? Absolutely. What do you get from the two sentences? The first one is, comma, like, what were you even doing with the keys? Who, you know, that's yes. the thing. But the second one is a request. It's Would a you, polite yes, one. Yes, do you know where my keys are at? Yeah. And these things are so unsaid. Very unsaid. When you look at things, it's, it's, it's so easy to focus on allow me to keep calling it silly season mm. but look at it in the different context mm. in the family context mm -hmm. um even in this room yeah many of us will have children mm -hmm. but the way we speak to them children don't distinguish i've had psychologists say children don't distinguish intention so if you yell at a child they will not they will hear the yell they will not hear the message they will hear the tone all right. Yes. Okay. It's okay. just like pets. Okay. Actually, the way the way to learn about yeah. nonverbal communication is to look at such children. Yes. Look at how. Like, have you seen how nursery school teachers are? I think they're they're so they're modest. Absolutely. To the kids. Yes. And the 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 people, our teachers in our formative years, these mm -hmm. are our nursery school teachers. Mm -hmm. These are the parents or even the the caregivers yeah. that take care of us from a very early age. Really determine mm. even how we view. Yes. The world. Yes. They determine how we, we uh, process the mm. world. Mm. So I'm, I'm coming to something else. Um, if I can let you put a word in there, Joyce. No, go, go ahead. <laughs> go, go ahead. Go ahead. It's called internal dialogue. Yeah, exactly. So we focus a lot on what people are saying. Oh, like if someone is coming to speak in public, yes. we want to prepare them for the public. We want to tell them wear the right colors, mm -hmm. make sure you do this, make sure you own the stage. Mm -hmm. But many times, I'll ask you, has anybody ever taught you how to speak to yourself? Mm, you're, teach teaching, you, you're teaching right now. How to speak to yourself. It's never taught. We're no. never taught. We learn. In fact, even um, in class, communication classes, we just glance through it. Intrapersonal communication. Yes. How do you speak to yourself? And how important is that? But I'm asking that question because, one, when you look at any given point, when you go on stage yeah. and you get a ready crowd mm. charged, we tend to lose our senses. We take our senses and take them on leave. And then we remain these people, that same body with a microphone. Yeah. And whatever we say, when you ask, what did you say? Later on, you say, I can't remember. Yeah. What goes through your mind at that particular point when your mic is on and you have a charged crowd and you want to pass a message, at that point, you lose it. Yeah. What goes through your mind? It, it, it sounds like, you know, the, the way Shakespeare said sound and fury signifying yes, nothing? Yes. It's just charisma. There's something about electrifying about a crowd. And again, if the internal has not been trained... The outcome will be obvious. The outcome will be obvious. If the internal has not been trained, there are people... Yes. ...for whom their internal dialogue is so synchronized that it doesn't matter whether they are speaking to one, to two, to ten, to ten thousand, or to a million. How do you manage this? It starts from the formative years. I wish I could put up a case for putting up communication from the very formative years. I wish I would... Uh, my practice yeah. focuses on intentional communication, mm -hmm. speaking with intention, understanding that Opening this mouth mm. is actually a leadership assignment. Whether you're speaking to a child, whether you are speaking to um, the person that opens your gate, whether you are speaking to your boss, it is a leadership assignment. But the way it is formed starts from the social setups that we find ourselves in. That's interesting. So this is family. Um, this is school. Mm -hmm. This is nursery school. Yeah. This is, you know, class one, two, three. Up until three. Yes. Class four, usually it's, it's formed. But class one, two, and three, very important. That's where um, you will find a lot of accents are formed. 
um, mm -hmm. a lot of um, perceptions mm -hmm. about the self mm -hmm. are formed at that age. Mm -hmm. So if there is the person that is doing the caregiving yeah. has no self-awareness, guess what they're going to do? They're going to pass on their own cycle to the people that they're, yeah. that they're bringing to. Yeah. So what, what really is internal dialogue? It really is understanding how to speak to yourself. It is under, how to speak to yourself and with yourself. And it is understanding that whatever it is that's happening around you externally mm. does not determine who you are. But internally, mm. your values, the values that you get or the values that you cultivate mm -hmm. at that young age yes. stay with you and keep you focused. Okay. What we are seeing in this season is the ramifications from what was not done ah, in the okay because you know when when you look at the politicians right now mm. it's um the way you call it a silly season, silly season. <laughs> <laughs> everybody tries to get their a game mm. in terms of speeches mm. how do i sell my manifesto how mm. do i sell my agenda how yeah. do i move the crowd yeah how convincing do i get anytime i get on stage mm. But my simple question is this. Are we always aware of what we say the moment the mic is on? I'm still going back there. Yeah. I would, I would actually hope that we are, mm. but the results are not very <laughs> positive when it comes to that. Yes. It, it seems like we only, if we, would, if we were to actually sit down and examine all of the, all of the launches yes. that <laughs> have been done since... Say even Sometimes last year, or, or or August, before, they're about... Let's actually even go back yeah. to 2005, yes. when politics, um, you know, we started now to become mm. much more deliberate about how mm. we're doing our launches, mm. colors, branding, and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. If we were to, to sort of examine, uh, actually, we should have put, like, you know, we should have actually done that, right? I, I like examine the different, <laughs> the different, like what happened this in 2005, this, 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 one, exactly. this, and then examine the results. Yeah, yeah. Because then that, that, that allows us to see, okay, was there substance in this? Mm. A lot of the times, and sometimes we just need to look at, so for example, let's say what happened on, on, on Sunday. Yeah. Um, is, is the person that was speaking on the stage the same person that we have experienced? You're talking about Musala Mudavadi. Well, yes, I exactly, am. Exactly, right. Well, they are, you know, in, mm -hmm. their, in their element, so mm -hmm. to speak, mm -hmm. or in their normal day. And that's how you know whether there is a balance. What you do is that you look at this person when they're on stage versus when they are off stage or when they are off camera. Okay, all and right. And then you put, you put that together and check. The comparison. Is there a synchronization here? Is their body language synchronized? Because you can tell. Um, one of the cases, at least I have studied, probably because, um, um, I mean, she was, a, she was a prominent female candidate, was mm -hmm. studying uh, Hillary Clinton, mm. um, you know, during during her, her tenure in politics. Yeah. And one of the things about her is that she was very passionate, mm -hmm. I think, about the things that she was um, running for. But at some point, the communication coaches got to her so much mm -hmm. that it almost felt like Hillary always practiced her moves. You know, when, when you're speaking, mm. you need to speak and with show intention. at the same time. So it but has it to be like synchronized. Speaking and then showing. You know, it, it needs to be synchronized. Right. If, by your, the your, way... Your here, body movement, yes, your and gestures, your words. your words should be in tandem. Yes. That's how people get peace around your communication. If, if you're, for example, speaking to someone, even speaking to me, and my words, I'm saying one thing, but my body language is okay, saying I, something I, I different. Want us to do, I want us to do something. Yeah. You can give me a scenario. Yeah. Um... And we, we are going to dramatize this one. You give me a scenario, <laughs> and from there you, you judge yeah. how, how it's going to be. Yeah. Give me a scenario. Um, okay. Let's, let's, let's look at a scenario. What's a good scenario? And I'm a speaker. In this, today I'm going to be a speaker. You're, you're in class. Yes. So let's, let's look at a scenario. I'm trying to look at, um, do we do a political one? Do we do a personal one? Personal communication usually is very easy okay. to, to, to do it. So we can do, we can do something on personal communication. And, mm -hmm. and probably, um, I don't know how you're going to demonstrate this. So I, I just stand here. I just stand here. Oh, okay. yes, yes. So actually, let's look at um, you talking to somebody, telling them okay. about your feelings. Okay. You're telling them about your 
intimate Director, feelings. today like you've been thrown under the bus, quite literally. <laughs> you threw yourself under the bus. Okay. <laughs> so okay. you're telling them that you love them mm -hmm. and you want to spend your life with them. Pardon? Yes. You, you can't take that again. So you, you're, you're in love with them. I have, I have feelings for you and I want to spend the rest of my life with you. So you're, you're sort of making a marriage proposal or a, or a relationship proposal. Wow. Let's is, take this to the next level. This is, this is difficult. Yeah, you, so you started this. If, if it all begins with the way you posture, yes. my dress code, mm -hmm. um, the tonal variation yeah. matters a lot. Yeah. Uh, assume that I'm talking to that person. Yes. And I'm making a proposal? Yes. Okay. So let's assume that uh, now you're the one uh -huh. or that person behind that yes. scene. Um, okay. So today I'm coming here. I'm hoping my gestures, uh, my in-laws, my friends who accompany me here. Today is a big day that we are witnessing this lady planning to work with me for the rest of my life. But one thing is certain. Uh, Madam, are you okay? Are you tensed? Is that the journey we are going to take moving forward is a tough one. It requires resilience, intentions. Did I make it? I want to go further than that. So that sounds like you are reading the news. First, the lady, you looked at the lady twice, like glanced at her, like, are you okay? You know, yes. that sort of thing. When you're saying that kind of thing, you're actually looking to her. And you're telling her, I choose you before my family, before my friends, mm -hmm. before God, of course. Yes. It's you that I choose, and I pray that you choose me. Your tone goes lower. It becomes a very personal conversation. Mm -hmm. So the one that you just did is, is the one that someone sitting behind there that would that understands body language would say ah, yes yes those are 15 red flags mm -hmm. there's, there's there's too much it, this is so too within smooth. that short period of this time you smooth. were able to pick 15 red flags absolutely 15 red flags was i convincing First, you it, you were too formal okay when it comes to matters intimacy when it comes to matters interpersonal communication mm -hmm. even your voice goes lower there's a way your tone softens. Mm, mm. There's a way your body language, even as a man, mm -hmm. softens. Yes. Um, and it also gets serious and very stable. Right. But again, because we're not, uh, this was, I mean, we, we, didn't, we didn't sort of think through this. It, it just sort of came up. Mm -hmm. If it was an actual scenario and somebody knows how to read body language, yeah, yeah. those are the things that you look out for. Mm -hmm. Again, we're looking at this from a political level. Mm. We should scale it down even to conversation level. Yeah. How do you know that the people that are speaking to you are telling the truth? Yes. That's how you check. You listen for the tone. You look at the, the, the movement of the eyes. Mm. You also look at how their own uh, body movement is mm -hmm. working. Yeah. Now, granted, you need to at least have had a relationship with this person so that you know what is normal for them. And how do you pick out what is normal body language? You just observe when someone is doing their daily work. Whether somebody's timid, Imagine this relaxed. is actually not rocket science. And, and let me tell you, if you look at um, um, parents, specifically caregivers, mm. mothers mm. are experts at reading body language. Yeah. When mothers are alert, they're experts at reading body language. Yeah. A friend of mine recently, uh, she really made me laugh. Mm. Um, we were having a conversation about something, and she told me um, when she had, I mean, she has a son, mm. and, and she told me that for months, she actually did not know that yeah. she was expecting her son. And she's going around, you know, and, and one of these, I mean, like the, the weeks towards the birth of her son, her mother just saw her for a very short time and asked her, hmm, you're expecting, aren't you? She wasn't showing, she wasn't, mm -hmm. and she was like, no. And the mother went like, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because she's learned yeah. she's watched and observed this young lady mm. in her normal face yes that's how 
communication is not rocket science. In fact, the way you said that 93% of what we say yes. is nonverbal. Nonverbal. Let me come to the aspect of dress code. Yes. They say that dress the way you want to be addressed. Uh -huh. Again, I go back to the political, you know, uh, the podiums arena. that yes. the arena right yeah. now. If right now I happen to walk out in a different attire, mm -hmm. different color, yeah. different, you know, coffee yes. and all that, yeah. and I'm supporting a different side of the political divide, mm -hmm. what would that sound or would that look like? to my opponents out there, dress the way you want to be addressed. Yeah, so what we're looking at then would be an element we call the psychology of color. Mm. What color triggers um, for us in yes. our communication? Yes. And it does trigger a lot of things. How is that, but how does that happen? you see men are colorblind. Men, we only know black and white, that's yeah. it. <laughs> so you'll excuse well, us for that. All, all the more reason why you should actually understand the psychology of black color. Black and white, that's it. That's it. Yes. And yet you don't know that color has an effect on you. Let me, mm, I, this is a good example. Let me just use it. Uh -huh. So I don't know if you've noticed um, of late, it's a very weird example, but let me just use it. Um, lately, example. like for, for example, over the past maybe few years, few months, mm. I don't know if you noticed, um, for the longest time when gin was marketed, mm -hmm. gin was marketed as just a colorless, clear thing. Yes. You know, it's, uh, uh, you know, blasted on billboards, buy it, go get it. Yeah, that was. Have you seen what they're doing with gin now? No. Because of targeting a female <laughs> audience, mm. so to speak, mm -hmm. of female users, yeah. gin has changed. It has all these really cutish colors. You know, you have your greens, you have your pinks. Um, you have... Allow me to say this mm -hmm. uh, sex appeal and in marketing. And yes. for the women, whoever they are looking at will find it appealing because of the color. Now, let's go back into the associations mm. that political parties have with color. Yes. Now, for the longest time, um, you know, people around again, because this, the period from, I think, 2005 to now, I mm. think, has been very fiery yeah. politically in Kenya. Where if we were to really look at case studies of what Kenya has been like politically from mm -hmm. 2005 mm -hmm. to right now. There's been a lot of, we'd have tons of case studies to look at mm. and tons of case studies in terms of branding, in terms of the use of colors. So orange. The um, use of songs. The, the use of songs. Yes. Even poetry. Yeah. I remember there was the use of those, uh, those um, shairis and, and a lot of, you know, poetry and songs around that time. Mm. But look at what color has been done. Like, like for right now, um, like, like before we start, you were giving me an example of this person wearing yellow and how that looks like. Mm. Because right now, yellow, green are associated with mm -hmm. what's happening politically. Yeah. And so that, that is what is at the top of the mind awareness. But generally speaking, um, I believe this is psychological. Um, colors do have an effect on us. We've, uh, 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 corporate, um, the corporate world across the world has mm. practiced color for the, the longest time. The sense of identification. Time. Yes, so yeah. they, they, they said, um, you know, navy suits uh, really mm. work, charcoal gray suits really mm. work, that sort of thing. Uh, for women, what you're wearing with pantsuits. Of course, this has changed. Mm -hmm. And it has changed, in fact, more drastically now mm -hmm. because of, of the remote working setup. So yeah. it's, it, it's really um, sort of changed up a lot of things. In fact, it got to a point where even the working world began to accept colors that were not naturally seen as as work colors. Mm. So gray, black, and navy were really accepted, and white mm -hmm. um, were really accepted as corporate colors at the very beginning. But yeah. then as, as we moved, I've noticed even uh, with female senior civil servants mm -hmm. and even um, like uh, governors and, and, and even presidential, potential presidential candidates, there's mm. a lot of like, for, for example, for us, we've Africanized a lot of our work. So you, you'll find that you're seeing um, a woman in corporate and, and she's wearing her, her, her formal um, attire, yes. but she has a jacket that's all, you know, Africanized African, and that yeah. sort of thing. So there's, 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 there's what we call pizzazz. We've added uh, pizzazz mm. to, to our lifestyle and it mm. gives a, a, a sneak peek of who we are. Yeah. So it, again, it still speaks to this, that color also kind of identifies us. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think if you want to also see the resplendence of it, yeah. um, you know, look at West Africans, the resplendence of 
color for them means so much. Identification that, is just so okay with them because when you go to South Africa, yeah. they have got their attire. Absolutely. You know, during campaigns, you see former presidents, the Zumas, yes. the, the Mandelas, they have got their, you know, traditional regalia, their yes. attires. But then when it come about the choice of songs, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in the last year's election in 2013, yeah. we had so many songs, yeah. you know, we can remember all of them. Yeah. And this time around, it has changed again. Yeah. What does choice of song again mm -hmm. signifies or represent, in this case, in a political field? Yeah. Yes. I, I'd say it, it, it looks For example, like what, at mm -hmm. yeah. that is in the public domain. <laughs> yes. We see Lero Nilero, you yeah. see, you know, running around last yeah. year, but uh, the other election we had, uh, um, uh, that lady, uh, that song, well, remind well, me, director? Well, uh, Sikwe Okay, I'll get that song that was for you. A song, yes, okay. So when you choose a particular song mm -hmm. for your branding, mm -hmm. how does it resonate with the audience? When you asked me that question, I think the first thing that came to mind was it looks like what designers do when they are when they are <laughs> just showing their collections. Yeah. So we'll say, okay, the 2017 songs were the spring collection. Yes. And this is this Ooh. is sort of a new collection. So Winter. within that that period, mm. of course, there has also been and and the, you actually raise such a pertinent point because I think then what happens is that we can also get a sneak peek into the growth mm. of art and Good you know, cultural acceptance yeah. are we becoming more liberal yeah. in you know in the things that 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 we share mm. um you can use that even as a case study to show how our communication has evolved uh when you look at our exposure to social media yeah. i think it it really just has to do with what is in mm -hmm. in um season right now of course there will be artists that will be very targeted mm. or, or focused on being able to release um the jingle yes. or the, the yeah the jingle that works um you know for that season mm, mm. and uh, I, I think that's also a whole topic like we could do a whole topic on, <laughs> on, on, on jingles you know what, what, what has been done uh, yeah, creatively yeah. um you know over the years in elections but i think what what an election year summons um, at least for this country, mm. is a whole. It's it's like there's a whole marriage of of not just culture, of how we communicate, of who we are as a people. If you observe it and read it well, you can make a case for how we are how, as a people. Are, are the politicians mastering this art? Yeah, they are experts like at that. it. Yeah. They are experts at it. They, they really, really study patterns, probably more than we all do. You have people sitting down studying mm. patterns. Mm. It looks very random. Yeah. I don't think it is. It's planned. Yeah, it's planned. Both at the physical level yes. and, and also, I mean, on a, at a different level. Mm. It's really very well planned out. Wangoi, allow me to ask you this question. Mm -hmm. You walk in a, in, in a room, yeah. packed, and yeah. you're told... Next on stage, we have got Victor Law, da 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 da, yeah. da 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 There is that aspect of stage fright. Whether you're used to or not, first of all, you have to take a deep breath in and out. All people, everyone who's pa who practice public speaking mm. will know that you must have that deep breath behind the scenes. Take a deep breath, you know, peep through the curtain, who is there, mm -hmm. okay, who is the dignitary there. Yeah. How do you break the ice so that the moment you hit the ground running, the first word that you'll utter will mm. carry the audience from the beginning until the end? You practice. When you are speaking to people, mm -hmm. I said, when, you, when you're asked to give a presentation, mm -hmm. whether it be a presentation to your colleagues, to the board, at the political level, mm. you practice. The way you show and convey respect is by practicing yeah. what you're going to say. So there's all the elements that we can speak about, like uh, ensure that you have, you know, your, your whatever, your key message mm. in three parts. This, this, this is now context. But the breaking, yes. yes. But the breaking of ice, the way you handle nerves, because nerves will always be there. In fact, mm -hmm. when I teach um, um, public speaking and communication, I tell people nerves are your friends. They're a good thing. Because they help you power mm, you to do you a good job. You control them. All you need to do, yes, is make them work for you. 
Um, there's but sometimes a we lose them. We, we, we separate. We ah. divorce each other and say... <laughs> Absolutely. Nav on their side and me and, on and, this and end. And me on this side and we are enemies. And there's a gap. Yeah, but much. Yeah. Because nerves are part of you. In fact, nerves will tell you, okay, so these are the things I'm... I'm afraid of this is what i'm afraid of maybe it even gives you insight into a lot of awareness of the things that you're probably mm. um you know that you that you need to have um an alert to right. so to speak right but how you know the question that you asked me is how how do you how do you handle nerves first you practice and as much as possible mm -hmm. try and find some time to get into that room beforehand okay yeah okay beforehand if you can mm -hmm. secondly um check practice what um if something can go wrong it'll go wrong mm. yeah if 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 a presentation yeah that's when law. that's when laptops crash that's when power <laughs> goes off that's when your flash disk you know the way you have you have the then the, the presentation, play. yes, yeah. on, a, on a flash disk and on the on, projector on, on the, decided to that is when those things happen so practice it and I, I, I if you want if you actually want to even be better at it mm. try and do your presentation without the presentation try like and practice do your presentation. it so well yes that if you were probably traveling to another country and your presentation equipment got stuck somewhere yeah. you would still be able to do your but, but that's that, that that needs a lot of professionalism yes. and preparedness the way yeah. you put it because yeah. um imagine I'm invited to speak at a rally. Yeah. And when I go there, mm -hmm. I'm told today you're going to get a particular group of people yes. supporting this particular side yeah. of, of the political divide. And yeah. then when you get there, mm -hmm. you get a completely different picture. Now that calls for readjustment, a quick one. Very quick. And you have to be creative enough to yeah. study the crowd. But mm. are we able to study the crowd very fast and adjust to that particular moment? That is what makes us good speakers actually and the way we do that is by understanding again yeah. what is our values you see it it goes back to internal dialogue mm. it goes back to how well grounded we are on the inside yeah. when uh, look at internal dialogue the way you would look at um, you would look at the foundation of a house yes without it it doesn't matter how it's everything shaky. looks it's shaky it's shaky it doesn't matter how high you go it's still shaky mm. I'm telling you, Victor, if there is a case that we can put up for just being able... You know the way you're telling me how to have difficult conversations, how to have mm. unexpected conversations. Mm. Like, for example, you've gone into a rally, uh, people are booing, how do you calm a crowd? And yeah. the people who can work a crowd, you know, mm. like that. It all, if you look at it, it stems from understanding their internal dialogue. The internal dialogue is... I, I would say from what I've, 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 I've practiced over the years, mm -hmm. the foundation of The way you handle yourself even before you talk to person matters a lot. Absolutely. When you talk of um, personal branding, yeah. again, um, it's, again, l let's go back to what happened on Sunday. Yeah. And the choice of soundtrack, mm -hmm. the choice of the jingles, yeah. the song, yeah. um, the lighting, mm -hmm set the pace and the mood for that particular occasion. But some people say, and suffice to say, mm -hmm. that with what Honorable Musale Mudavadi was saying, there were two different people. Mm. What do you make of that? Because when you say, to Sidanganyane, yes. and the Honorable Musale Mudavadi, in this case, yeah. is somebody who we know is charismatic, yeah. who is composed, authoritative, yeah. presidential, yeah. but when the speech was completely not uh, like him, and mm -hmm. some people out there say that that was not him. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What do you make of that? How do you sound authentic in your speech? You can, by the way, you can spin this two ways. One, you can spin it that he was coached. He was really well coached to speak the way he was. Okay. That's one way that you can spin it. Mm -hmm. The other way that you can spin it is that you know what? He's matured politically, and and so the person that you have known before is 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 now different because yeah. he's going for a different you know level in mm -hmm. office. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, there's no, there is no right. Yeah or even wrong mm -hmm. opinion in this because there's people who feel a certain way about it. Yes. I think to be able to come up with an, a, an accurate interpretation of this, uh -huh. you need to study 
Musalia Mudavadi public life from from the very beginning ah, okay. look at his okay. growth okay look at where he's been because it's it's very easy to okay. focus on oh when he was he was finance minister or when he was this and that you, mean, and that. you not get it study him study his public life over a period of time the way he and then when himself. you study it you will be able to have an accurate opinion of what happened on sunday so the choice um i mean, I mean uh, the way you're saying the choice of of of, of the sound mm. the sights and sounds mm -hmm. but also the choice of speakers you know the people that were selected mm. to speak mm. the choice of dress um the the choice of who who was was sort of you know um, um, leading the event? The lineup of speakers. Yes. There's there's so much that you can that you can infer from that. But I'd say to get an accurate picture, study his public life, and not just him. Mm -hmm. Study um, Honorable Ruto's public life mm -hmm. and study what he did. Mm -hmm. Study President Kenyatta's public life mm -hmm. and look at how how he's um how he's um you know he's he's speaking in public is one of the things that um you know but to 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 talk about um 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 kenyatta in this sense is his the the thing that you catch with him yes. fast which makes public speaking very easy for him is that he's very he's he's very people mean much to him you know he's he's, he's a people person exactly and so and because is that is who he is, when he gets <laughs> on stage, it comes, it comes forth very easily. Yeah. So because as you study patterns of, of people in public life, which is, is appropriate. Um, so the, the people that are not in public life, we don't have the luxury of doing that. Mm. But the people around our lives, we can do that because we are interacting with them mm -hmm. at work. Um, you're interacting with them as, as, as you do tea, as you move yeah. around. Yeah. That's how you observe. So we need to be al alert and aware of what what um movement exactly. is being done so that's what i would say about about the sunday Be because because you know, you know it's quite interesting yeah uh when, when when you look at a person's public life yeah and when they are completely in their normal lives they're yes. two split personalities yeah um you'd you easily, easily say that you know it's, it's the same same person i saw talking on the podium mm -hmm. and spewing those mm -hmm. heavy words and yeah. right now he's a cool guy yeah he's cool and Collected, yeah. Split personality, yeah. What makes a person to have that split personality in terms of in your private life and yes. the public eye? Yeah. So two things do that. One, it could actually be, um, and this is a simple explanation. It yeah. could actually simply be inauthenticity. Mm. You're not authentic. You um, show a certain um, persona mm -hmm. when you're out in the public, mm -hmm. but privately there's something else that's going on. So that um, will come from things that are unresolved, will come from things that, such as the lack of confidence, will mm. come from things such as insecurity. Mm. And like I said, that's the easier explanation. Now, if you study the patterns of people that have had to um, live their lives publicly mm. for a very long time. Mm. Um, you know, you're looking at people that have been in the presidency yeah. for a long time. You're looking at people that have um, even served, you know, places of, 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 of pressure, even served in, um, in, 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 in religious circles mm -hmm. also. You know, people that have been, have been, the pedestal is placed very high yeah. for them. People that are Nobel Peace Prize winners, people that are known as humanitarians, mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. such as the royal family. Mm -hmm. There's one thing that you'll notice. Public life is very alluring, but it's very tiring. I talked to some of my friends who yeah. were vying for political seats, yes. and they say, you know what, Victor? Yeah. This thing is emotionally it draining. It is emotionally draining. And that is a gross understatement. It is draining. And so it feels that when you are out in public, you need to have a certain outfit that mm -hmm. you wear mm -hmm. so that you can cope with that kind of world. But then as you step out of it, yeah you need to then get back into what is a safe space, which is who you really are. Even people in at very high um, you know, level um, corporate jobs yes. will have that. You will have there's this expectation from the people, from your audience around mm. you. But then in your private life, you also have an audience. And this yes. audience in your private life mm ideally should be the most important so yeah. this this is your family these are the people that you care about yes. these are the people that that sort of um feed you so that you're able to 
um, stand in public. And so this is protected space. So there's two, th those are the two um, um, reasons yes. I would actually share with you. One could be the inauthenticity. Mm -hmm. Then I need to put in this space because I can't afford people to know who I really am. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with confidence. I'm, I'm insecure. I probably don't feel very, very experienced. Yes. And that Security. can be handled. Yes, that, yeah. that is easily handled with coaching, with things such as therapy. It, it's very easily handled. But the one where you're, you're continuously living a public life, mm. okay. that's Hmm. This, 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 yeah. this, 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 we have just, we just started. You know what? <laughs> when you talk of Have split we? personality, yes. uh, it reminds me of um, one gentleman called Raul, Raul's veil of ignorance, where yes. you put on a uh, veil mm -hmm. and then when you lift it off, yes. you realize that, uh oh, oh, it's not the same, same person. Uh. Perhaps what happened during weddings. And you're exactly. You. All right, let's take a break <laughs> before I remove my veil <laughs> to just know who I am yeah. here and here. We are yeah. coming back to discuss this. We are talking about context when we come back. We are talking about the dressing for an occasion and perhaps um, what we need to know more. And Wangoi is here to help us discuss that. We are taking a break. We'll be right back. What has just happened? My director has left the gallery and he's come to the floor to tell me that I'm being lectured. I'm in class. I said, I'm in class. <laughs> I'm in class. Oh, good. Thank you. You you are lecturing me. No, 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 no. We are learning something new. An amazing show. An amazing show. And if you're a politician or an aspiring politician, this is what you need to have with you this particular point because you probably are going to address a gathering somewhere in the next one hour because it's back to back, back to back, back to back until the end of August 9th. Wangoi with me in studio. Mm. Wangoi, let's continue with the context because okay. when you want to get down to do a speech, mm -hmm. first of all, context is key. Yeah. You have to get to know your key points. Mm -hmm. What are you going to cover in your speech and timing? All right. So you talked about um, your key points, how you're going to order your speech and the timing. And the timing, three things. Yeah. Right. Um, there's a key one over there, mm -hmm. and it is who are you speaking to? Exactly, the audience. The audience. So many times when we're practicing or preparing to speak to people, mm -hmm. we, we focus on our subject matter, and we should. It's actually important because your subject matter is then what you're going to say to people. Yes. But then who are you speaking to? Where are they coming from? Where is their... What is their... Uh, context, mm -hmm. orientation, what is their experience? Mm. Because again, um, communication 101, um, communication is context. Yeah. Yes. It, it really is contextual, actually. Mm -hmm. The way I speak to you, um, you, you know, the, the way Ben is asking, <laughs> someone is asking, are you a lecturer? The way, because maybe that is their uh, experience of having a lecturer yes. you know somebody um, sharing information from them mm. we process messages based on where we have been mm. based on where we are from mm -hmm. and that's why things such as stone um uh, matter much when it comes to um, communication yeah. because there are people who grew up in high tone homes you know this is where Kalele. you know co Le yes so that's, so that's what their brain registered that is what registers and the moment that uh, registers, it, it means, ah, either they will try and if, they are, if mm. they're aware, they will try and break free from it. But if they get into a context where they are then yelled at, they're mm -hmm. saying, mm, I'm not taking this. Yeah. So they will not listen to the message. And they are, they're those who grew up in very um, harmonious um, homes, so to speak. And that's how they process information. And what do we call them when they come into our workspaces? We call them slow. Ah, uh, they process mm. it very slowly. But it's mm. just that for them, mm. it's everything is methodical. Yeah. So context, um, to get back to, to what we were talking about, context means understanding your audience. Yes. Understanding what they mean. Now there's there's we've we've used well, many speakers have used this example. Please allow me to use it. Um mm -hmm. albeit it being a very um, you know, foreign example. Yeah. But um Steve Jobs, at the time, I think he was 
in his prime then. Mm. He was asked to give, um, it's, it's one of the most popular things I've seen online. He was mm. asked to give, um, um, how do you call this? They, they have they have they have a name that they call it you know like when when you have a chief guest at a graduation they have a name for it i yeah. just can't remember the name right now and and he he was to give one at stanford and when he came in everybody was expecting ah in, this is steve jobs this is steve jobs they're speaking something good and you know what steve jobs did you, you can actually I'll, I'll 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 share that with you yeah and and he just said i'll tell you three stories like from my life and he shared the story of how when three, actually three stories, and all of those three stories sort of formed his, his, um, his forming or his success yeah. at Apple. Mm -hmm. But the conclusion of that speech was this. Um, stay hungry, stay foolish, I think. Something like that. Because they said it was something that, that he used to read when he was young. But why that speech was very successful was because he understood he was not speaking to investors he was mm. not speaking to his staff he was not speaking to board members he was speaking to fresh graduates who were full and exactly. expectant yeah. with hope yeah. about life yeah. and he inspired them um as we say well well he did inspire them really well right. when 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 that works so context is key so let's start with context understand who are you speaking to mm -hmm. so if you are i have a I have a um, I've been I've been observing, um, you know, sort of a few candidates as yeah. they are going into their 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 campaigns, and I'm I'm particularly very interested in female um, contestants mm. at, at either you know Senate level, women's rep, or gubernatorial. Yeah. There's this particular um, um, candidate, and I, I say this as a disclaimer: I'm not you know I'm not um, mm -hmm. you know doing any work yeah. in her yeah. in her campaign. But one of the things, and she's one of the most She's one of the most independent minds that I know of. You know, she's a feminist through and through. Mm. But I've been observing something about her, her gubernatorial um, you know, campaigns mm -hmm. and how she's been running her campaigns. And there's something I have noticed about what she does. First, she has completely transformed how she dresses. So every single time she is on the campaign trail because she is working with, um, she's meeting very many different mm. uh, groups of people. Mm -hmm. She's completely from, 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 I mean, she's completely dressed up. Like she's, her, 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 her dresses have all of a sudden gotten to ankle length. Yes. And they are, are beautiful, very stylish dresses. And her tone has also gotten to the level because of where she's running her tone has also of gotten authority. to the level where yes. she is conversational she is not speaking and commanding at. she is conversing all right with the different people that mm -hmm. she's meeting i i look at that and i pray that it resonates i pray that um you know she gets that position because the person that you are seeing is a person that is drawing from mm -hmm. their strengths of mm -hmm. what they understand development to be and they're wholly committed to their people being raised up to a different level mm. but then they also understand my people may not have been where i have been so i need to go down to their level for this message to come and across. who is this person her name is patience nyange thank you boom patience <laughs> nyange you got it right you got it when she's she's really really doing an excellent job when mm. it comes to and perhaps this the is something that most of the female of candidates campaign. should 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 master yeah because in, you know the, that perception about female candidates yes. when they take it to the podium yeah there's a different picture that the audience paint about them yeah so how you manage your audience mm -hmm. also matters whether you're going to win them yeah. or you're going to lose them mm. let's talk about time mm -hmm. you have got um, 10 or 15 minutes. Yes. Most of these politicians say, ah, next, tafadali, tafadali, tafadali. Yes. They can be the next speaker, yeah. they can be the time, nini, nini. Yeah. But you find them going beyond the stipulated time and then they find Mike is being snatched from away from them. People How do you manage listening. Exactly. Yeah. Or is being switched off from, from somewhere. Mm. How do you manage your time so that you're given one minute or two minutes, you go straight to the point, hit the jackpot mm. and go home. All right. So in addition to understanding who you're speaking to, yeah. the most important thing, again, when you're managing time is to know what are the major points that I want to say. It could be one point. If you have a short time, mm. make it one point. But we, we usually will advise when you're working um, 
on a speech or a presentation yes. have three key points. Three key points sound like a story. You know the way a story has a beginning, a middle, and an end? Exactly. That ties it very neatly. So even when you have a short time, think about three quick things that you want to say to those people. And then that's one. Two, understand what is the context. Can I use a joke? Can I use facts? Can I use mm. a story? Mm. What, what, what is the hearing of the people, people that you're songs. working with? Uh, exactly. No, yes. Otherwise, beyond that, you're speaking into the wind. You're speaking into the... You're just... You're really just, um, you, you know, defiling our ears, so to speak. <laughs> you, you really are. Yes. So, so, three key points. And I would say this even for um, um, speech writers. Mm. Even though you weave in so much into it, have three key points. Let whoever is analyzing that speech or even whoever is giving that speech mm -hmm. be able to understand. So these are the three key areas mm -hmm. that this person was talking about. L let's talk about, for example, let's yeah. go back and um, analyze Barack Obama. Yeah. When he goes on stage, sometimes in a full suit. Yeah. Sometimes you find him, he's in tie on, yeah. sleeves folded, folded, and then there's a way he holds the microphone yeah. and sound us across the podium, yeah. left and right. Yeah. How would you describe Barack Obama's speech in one minute, the way he moves across the stage, eye contact, and delivery of speech? And Barack comparison Obama, yeah. to what we have currently here. Yeah. Yes. Barack Obama is an A1 speaker. Yeah. Wow. Is there, is there like... And I know many people have studied him. him. <laughs> he's, he's, he's the perfect public speaker. Because he took time to, again, he's very studious. Mm. When, when you think about or when you, when you observe him, he's, he has, he reads voraciously. Mm. He reads, he has tons and tons and tons of materials. And he's also um, um, interested. Mm. Like, I think his context as a grassroots mobilizer mm. allowed him to sneak peek into the empathy that's required yeah. to deal with people. Yeah. Now, if you're looking um, um, for someone like that, mm -hmm. one of the things that I guess um, I would say about him is you, the care comes through. Mm -hmm. That he cares comes through. Mm. I think we have a lot of politicians here that would do a good job in terms of speaking in public. Yes. But the lack of care, that you don't care about the electorate is what comes through mm. a lot. Mm. That's why you're, you're hearing the careless talk and that's why you're... But if, again, if we observe, if we, if we were to sort of put in this speakers and this speakers, you would actually be able to pick out yes. this person cares, this person is development conscious, this person is not just taking us for a ride. Yeah. But usually we sort of blanket all of them because that's of it. the bad experience that yeah. we've had. Um, I, I think that's just us as careless. <laughs> yes. But perhaps we, we have Oh yeah, a we chance. have something to say about every single thing. Every single moment. Yes. Give them a microphone and we yeah. have got something to say. Yeah. But I believe we have got a chance to make things right. Yeah. Um, as we come to a close, mm -hmm. one thing that uh, stands out, yeah. speech writing. Yes. Um, you have to be part and parcel of the speech. You have to put in your input there. Mm. You have to make sure that you go through the speech before and you know, make all the amendments yeah. here and there, fix this, fix and that. Yeah. And you, you, you come to a situation where you want to incorporate mm. your speech writer. Mm. All these things, at the end of the day, will boil down to a choice of your speech writer. How do you make sure that your speech is completely open to the public? They are able to tell the moment they start speaking now, that is Victor. Mm. When they start speaking now, that is Wangoi. Mm. Comes back to authenticity. Yeah. Authenticity and the choice of a speech writer. I think a good speech writer is as like a good biographer. Mm. You know the way you, you want to do your biography and you get somebody who is really good at it? And one of the ways um, speechwriters can really do their job well mm. is by getting access to yeah. whoever it is that they are writing the speech for. Spend time with them. Have conversations with them. Ask them, um, you know, what do you like? Why, what color appeals to you? Mm. Ask them things about themselves that are not necessarily speech focused yes. so that you begin to understand what is the essence of this person. Because a good speech communicates essence. It communicates the essence of the person that's giving that speech. Mm. And when that essence is not... You know the way you can't touch essence? We, we, you, you, can, you, can, you, you, you know the scent of it. You know when essence is around. Mm. But when it's not around, you know it. So it, it, it just feels hollow and yes. empty when it's a speech. So I think um, good speech writers 
become better as they get access to the people that they're writing the mm, speech for. Mm. So you, you sort of engage, interact, have, you know, um, some time with this person yes. out of their, you know, work context. You know, yeah. the, the way we did, we did your demo. And, <laughs> and, and I did terribly bad. I, I, it was terrible. <laughs> yes, versus, you know, what, what is actually it. So you, it, it, it's, it's like um, a, a courtship, for lack of a better mm, word, mm. where you, you really spend um, an intimate time with a person so yes. that you understand what is their essence, what is this person like. Follow them when they're doing non-speech things mm. or non-public things. Right. Um, I think that's, that's how uh, people that have served people who are in the public arena mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. um, that's how they have succeeded yes. when it comes to speech writing. That, that, that um, I think, is my view. I think mm. it's an excellent um, privilege to mm -hmm. be able to write um, someone's speech or even to get somebody to write a speech for you yeah. but then that relationship is is um, grows mm. when there is um, um, closeness and access. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, your final words so we come to an end because you said these are silly season. We expect to see, uh, okay, those are your words. <laughs> of yes, course, every, silly every, season. everything is just going yes. upside down. Yeah. Your final words because we expect to see many aspiring candidates mm. or even seasonal candidates yeah. who season candidates who are still making yeah. that step in politics mm. what should you tell them so that they become outstanding whenever they go out there and talk to the public remember even um what happened to senator linturi mm. um oh, yeah. the choice of words yeah, yeah. you talk out there yeah. and within a very short minute yeah. you are in trouble so what would you tell the aspiring candidates more so to the politicians I think the thing is key, and I probably have, have, have um, alluded to it a lot in this conversation. Mm. Here is the thing. Your internal dialogue is the most important thing in public speaking. How your values are placed in that internal dialogue is what will come out. So whatever it is that we are seeing yes. publicly mm -hmm. is as a result of what is going on and as we learn how to read body language and mm. as we learn how to decode your words we will actually be able to see the kind of person that is inside your internal dialogue is critical mm. um, nurture it and mm. it's never too late sometimes we we, we we probably didn't start at it in the formative years but yeah. there's tons of exercises some things we can learn along build the way our self -awareness. Exactly. yes right. so that we learn who we are Wangoi. yes Thank you so much. Thank you for having Apparently, me. We, we've taken more time than oh, we were okay. allocated. The director said that, Victor, continue, continue, yeah. continue. I think they were taking notes in the gallery. Oh, they were. They were taking notes. Yeah. That's Class why they're asking where, whether I'm lecturing. You're lecturing. <laughs> I, I was not in a lecture hall. I was just being lectured on. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank We've you been for speaking to me. Wangoi Munyao and Munyo, sorry, uh, who is also a communications consultant and lead speaker rich and he's also a journalist by profession. He just decided to drop down his pen and <laughs> paper and you know he's a writer well we're she's, better she's for it yes yeah we're okay. better for it you're better for it because no, i no. did that no no no, no, no. <laughs> you 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 are you are you're a, you're, a, you're a pioneer yeah thank you so much for joining us thank okay i hope me. you learned something and to the politicians remember that what you say begins inside it's about what is okay. inside of you and what you express there matters a lot to the people we're taking a break all right we'll be right back class dismissed ding ding <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for Thank having you. me. <laughs> Thank you for having me. All right. Me. Thank oh. you for having me. This was fun.